for the face mask. It looks bad. Well, bad. Well, not the word from it. It has to come up to be bad. Yeah, it's the way I can be in that house, right? How are you? You know, someone you? worked for in the week. You're going to get it back. It ought to prove to be interesting because both of those teams will have the week off um, that they're playing. Yeah, playing Philly. And also, um, this is my understanding of where the board is at with. If, when you leave it open, it'll auto off and it keeps from oh. auto off. Oh, where we are She's looking at me is like, what are you hearing? <laughs> <laughs> I don't hear a thing. For CIP? Um, well, oh, no. yes. Yeah. Like, for CIP, and then I put um, ones by taxation, but there's still others. Uh, no. Did you see the no, peel out more? Well, we so it's a conversation point. We didn't officially put Well, no, so I just not officially it. voted because it's maybe, yeah, it's just And it's down by right. my house, my road is a nice first one. It is paid, we paid the road last week. Oh, yeah, yes, that looks I good. saw that today. That's freaking unbelievable. Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere. Everywhere. I was wondering if they did it because she lived there. Because <laughs> I yelled at the sky and goodbye and came out there, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you should see the tracks they start right in the south of gold. <laughs> I apologize to my neighbor. <laughs> I have the two. If the, those are the two. If you, if you, if you, if you, yeah, I had to come around me if you yeah, couldn't stop. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's really, we're already convinced. That was it. Around six o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. been doing 50 okay, years. Okay. better. When she watches the tape, she sees the stuff. There you go. Thank you. All right. All right. Okay, I um, Let me do open it. the meeting at six, the public hearing at six o'clock. Um, tonight we're hearing a public comment about three um, different ordinances. And we have a sheet here, and Caroline will be running the meeting. So, so the first public hearing is on the changing of the speed on Bear Road. Um, Chief, I don't know if you want to speak to um, how this was initiated and the um, Highway Safety Committee's role. Sure. Um, back in September, the Highway Safety Committee uh, met uh, with several yeah. folks from Bear Road yeah. and the surrounding area. And there was a meeting actually prior to that as well. And, you know, number one complaint on Bear Road is the fact that the number of people that were, that were speeding on that roadway. <clears throat> and the, the, the biggest issue is the Navy Yard traffic going to and from the Navy Yard. That's, that's when the, the big bulk of the, the violations are occurring. Um, so the committee looked at the roadway. It's narrow to begin with. There are a number of blind driveways and a blind crests. And then you have an intersection of Sliger Road, which is, which is really on a bl almost on a blind, on blind crest itself. So after hearing all of the information from the folks that live there and, and looking at the roadway itself, the committee decided that uh, maybe it's, it's time to reduce the speed limit on Bear Road from 35 to 30 um, with additional enforcement. So the committee did meet, as I said, in September, and we made a recommendation that not only for, for um, Clement, or, I mean, excuse me, for uh, Bear Road, but there were a number of other roadways in town that weren't on the current speed limit 30 or 35 zone in town here. So we actually added um, and recommended that Bear Road, Howell Road, Mechanic Street, Old Indigo Hill Road, Pease Lane, Ross Road, S Settlement Circle, Spruce Street, Stevens Court, Toll Road, and Wentworth Street all be uh, um, put in the speed zone of 30 miles per hour as required by, by state statute. The only repeal is uh, the current ordinance says that Bear Road um, is posted at 35 miles an hour. So we're looking to repeal that section. So copies of all the ordinance revisions are available on the table if anybody wants to look at the specific language. Uh, I'm going to read the first complaint of the resident on Bear Road who initiated this act action. Um, she reiterated this concern to the board via email um, this morning. I can no longer walk on Bear Road and it is hazardous to pull out of our driveway. The traffic along the populated area is going so fast that we are fearful on a daily basis. 
There have been two dogs killed, one seriously injured. My dog was one of them and she was on a leash crossing over the roadway to our driveway. I suppose I was lucky not to have been hit myself, but that doesn't make the pain away from watching her die. Take the pain away. There have been multiple accidents. Luckily, none of them resulting in a death, but it's only a matter of time. The accident this week, it was written in August, was very serious, initially written in August. A young man thought to be doing 70 to 80 miles or an hour or more, as witnessed by a neighbor, came over the hill from the Dover side and plowed into an SUV pulling out of Sligo. The gentleman coming from Sligo said he had looked twice, but at the rate of speed the other vehicle was traveling, he pulled out without seeing the car approach over the hill. There were two runners who narrowly avoided being hit and were quite shaken. Um, that's from Karen Staines, um, who lives on Bear Road. We also heard from Nancy Carmer, her neighbor. Her comment is, I'm working this evening and cannot attend the, um, the public hearing, but wanted to go on record reiterating that I believe 30 miles an hour is appropriate from Route 4 to the base of the hill after the Sligo Road intersection. I think 35 miles an hour is appropriate between the base of the hill and Gulf Road. I have experimented with driving 30 miles an hour on the lower section, and it seems a bit unreasonable given there are no houses or curb cuts. Enforcement might be a challenge. Thanks again for working on this issue and monitoring the traffic speeds on the road. So with that, those are the two comments we've heard so far. Is there anybody who would like to ask any questions or comment on how they feel about the proposed revisions? Hi, I'm Linda Christian, and I live on Bear Road as well. Um, Karen and, and Nancy and I have chatted. This it basically started years ago when they repaved our road, and the chief had looked into the situation because I said, I'm really concerned the potholes and the condition of the road really kept the road speed down, and we didn't have that. As soon as the road was paved, it's been getting worse and worse. And when the chief did a study this time, I mean, I was shocked when he saw that it was 7,000 cars are going down our road a week. So over the course of time, it's not only the speed, it's the volume of cars that are going. And you've got three or four cars in a row that are coming home from the Navy Yard, and they're flying down that road. So if there's an accident, you've got people on right behind you, and they're not going to stop. So it's not only a question of one car. At times, it's a question of multiple cars when you're just looking at the volume. And you know, Miles can attest to that. We've got dogs. We don't even want to walk them on the road down there. We put them in the car and take them to the fields because that strip is really very dangerous. So anything you can do would be extremely helpful. We appreciate the, the chief looking into this. Thank you. My name is James Cushman. I'm my husband. I live at 95 Bay Road. And um, the chief did a survey uh, of uh, the speed that the cars are traveling at. And I don't know if you have got a copy of that. But they're outrageous. For a 35 mile an hour zone, they are crazy. Some of them were up to 60 or 65 miles an hour. That's what he clocked in that. You know, it, it, someone's going to get killed. Jason Sargent, uh, 497 Stockdale Circle. Um, so I, I do transit the road daily um, uh, to, to and from. Uh, I, I was actually came, coming here tonight to make comment similar to the second uh, verse that you had uh, read where south of Sligo there's relatively no homes for, for a long stretch but if, if possibly that could be maintained at 35 and I, I do understand um, <clears throat> the road is narrow especially in the winter time it is it, it, you do have to reduce speed but um, you know we should, we should probably be looking at can we widen the road for safety aspect anyway as a as a separate item but um, what are we going to do about prosecuting people that are going 65 down the road so I, I travel it every day I try to maintain the speed limit as best as I can a couple of times on, on the downhill after Sligo I might speed up a little but I generally have the traffic behind me because they're the ones you know they don't like me so um, but I especially love the ones that come racing up to me and then get right on my bumper. But, so. I'd like to add also that um, we have a telephone pole on our property. It was hit three times last year to give you an idea that people are not going slow there. Granted, most of it was during the winter time, but they don't go appropriate speed on that road. They're hitting the pole and they had to replace it three times. That's just last year. That's not the rest of it. <clears throat> I think 
have up in Heritage Drive. Um, my husband and I both use that road pretty often, and um, he said to me last week he got very early in the morning, and there was an elderly gentleman out jogging and, and in the the dip closest to Route Four, and he he almost hit him. He was like on the road and he had to swerve out of the way. So um, as we were talking about it, the second statement that you read seemed to make sense to us as well, slowing it down, especially in the, the dips and the high parts, and then after Sligo, maybe leave it at 35. Okay. Chief, do you want to talk to that? The reason that you had said that, you were, that was one of the things that came up for discussion um, in the last meeting, but your, your thoughts on doing the whole road? Uh, I know you... Discussion you're, you're, but the last time we, we met, we had talked about that as a possibility, 30 in front of the residential areas and then the fields, leaving it at 35. But your thoughts on doing it consistently was, are people really going to slow down, was my understanding. Well, well correct. You know, um, you know, when you have one road that has multiple speed limit changes on it, um, like Summersworth Road, for example, has, has two different zones, um, you know, people get fixated on the higher speed anyway, and they're going to travel that speed. Um, you know, if you look at Tolan Road that goes from downtown Dover all the way up to uh, Route 125 in Barrington, I mean, there are, there are some places where that there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of feet and you don't have a house or anything. And that, and, and that road is about four feet wider than Bear Road. And that is 30 miles an hour the entire length, all the way from Dover in into Barrington. So, can I just address, address some numbers that was brought up here? Certainly. Um, we put out the, the stealth radar unit uh, in August for six days. And during the six days, there were almost 7,000 cars that then went up and down Bear Road. The majority of folks are traveling between 36 and 40 miles per hour. So there are, the majority of folks are traveling, you know, uh, between one and five miles over the speed limit. That was 2,451. The next highest group were the folks traveling between 41 and 50 and 45 miles an hour, and that was 1,475 cars. The third group was traveling between 31 and 35, and that was 1,292. And then uh, when you get up to 46 to 50, you're talking you know, almost 350 cars. 51 to 55, there were 56 cars. 56 to 60, 16. And then 65 to 60, uh, 61 to 65, there were six cars that drove through there during that, during that week, traveling at that speed. So it, it does tell you that the majority of folks are, tra are, are traveling uh, over the postal speed line. You know, we've done what we can to, an, in, uh, to do enforcement out there, but I could sit out there for five days a week at the exact same time every day, and I'm still going to catch one or two speeders going by. Because everybody speeds nowadays, you know, for the most part. Most, most of the folks are speeding to and from where they're getting to. And, um, you know, as far as Bear Road is concerned, I mean, that is probably the road in town where we have the most violations and the least amount of uh, enforcement. Because it is a side street, it's not, it's not a, main, a main road, but we certainly try to get out there uh, for the folks as often as we can. So. Are there any more comments, questions? Just, just as a behaviorist, it takes six to eight weeks to change a person's behavior. If you're going to have two different speed limits on that, those people are not going to be doing both because they're going to be looking at two different ones. If we want to change the behavior, we need to be consistent. And if you have a consistent behavior, they're just going to do it. Sit and enjoy the road. It's a really nice road. But they use us as a cutoff, so they're going through fast to get, you know, so they don't have to do 236, which takes them out longer. But I think the traffic is only going to get worse. The area is still growing. You've got more people from here going out to Portsmouth and coming back. I think we really need this. is our chance to change it and keep it consistent. Thank you. The select board has these three ordinance revisions listed later on their agenda where they will deliberate um, and consider all of your comments. Um, and approve those changes or not. The transfer station ordinance is a little different because that um, will have to go to town meeting. The other two ordinances um, could get approved um, tonight or at a following meeting, um, but should be changed relatively soon. Um, I'm going to close the public hearing on the Bear Road 
speed change and go well, on. All roads, though. It's not just well, there. you're right. It is, I'm sorry. I do stand corrected. It is a number of roads changing the speed ordinance. Um, next is the travel restrictions ordinance 14-002, limiting commercial traffic. Um, Chief, did you want to speak to what brought this change about? Sure. For a couple of years now, we've had folks in town uh, uh, requesting that we limit heavy trucks on some roads. Um, several years ago, we, we started with the Bear Road, Pinch Hill, and Slider Road. So unless they're making a delivery on that roadway to a resident, they're not allowed to travel on those roadways. And those are vehicles 26,000 pounds and higher. That's your, that's your, your large dump trucks, uh, uh, cement trucks, tractor trailer trucks, and things like that. And we still do find people using Bear Road as a shortcut with, with large vehicles. Uh, however, the you know the highway folks and others in town as well, of all Clement Road and then some of the other roads that uh, that they're they're using as 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 a cut through and it was brought to Silver Street and Roberts Road and Rollins Road. But we can't control Silver Street and Rollins Road and Roberts Road because those are all state uh, state roadways. However, we can uh, control uh, the large trucks from using all of the town roads as cut throughs. Um, the, the way the ordinance is, is written, uh, it's not preventing any business in town from driving their large vehicles on any of these side streets unless, unless, they're going, uh, unless they have to go from point A to point B directly. For example, a C&J bus can't leave there, go down Foundry, turn off Locust, go down Willie, down to Mechanic Street, then onto Main Street. That, that's prohibited. But certainly, he can use, they can use any road in town. Mid construction can use any road in town as long as they're using it from going from point A to point B and no shortcuts. Our biggest violators are, are the uh, uh, construction companies from out of town and the oil trucks and, and, and such. So, uh, you know, the highway department feels also that by reducing or, or eliminating the large trucks from traveling on these roadways, the roads are going to be uh, tip-top shape much longer than, than they would be if we continued to allow the trucks to go down. These roads that really weren't designed for the large trucks to begin with. So, so that, that's the, the reasoning why the committee has recommended that uh, all town roads, not just the three that what we have now, but all town roads be prohibited from having commercial vehicles unless that company is making a delivery or a service to a resident on that particular roadway, or they're going from point A to point B directly. Thank you, Chief. Does anybody have any comments or questions about that potential revision? Thank you. Then we'll, move, then we'll close that public hearing and move on to the transfer station ordinance revisions. Um, this was brought about um, partly because our disposal fees are over budget for what we pay to get rid of the, uh, the various, the variety of ways that we receive from the residents. And so it caused us to question why that was going on and what we can do about it, but at the same time, um, the select board was receiving a lot of requests from landlords for um, transfer station permits. So the text is here if any of you would like to um, look at all the proposed changes. Some of it is just about updating text. It, this document um, regulates who uses the transfer station and how it is to be used and, and the rules regarding the transfer station. And um, so some of the revisions are just about language. Some of it is about um, updating practices that we no longer partake in, such as um, burning burning waste. At one point we were burning waste. So we, we got rid of some things like that that just no longer apply. Um, one of the primary revisions of the ordinance is that um, it did allow for property owners to have a right to um, have a permit to dispose of waste. Um, one of the revisions would, um, it, it gets rid of that word property owner so that one can only be a resident. So landlords would no longer have that right. Um, it does um, speak to the kinds of waste that we, we, we receive. It does not include the fee structure. The fee structure is a separate document that is handled separately, which will likely be revised by the board 
in the upcoming months, but is not part of this at this time. Um, it also enables the select board to delegate to me as the town administrator special exceptions because uh, whenever there's any kind of ordinance there's always got to be some kind of process for appeals if somebody feels aggrieved by the rule or if they feel like an exception should be made. So that was included as well. Um, the placement of the sticker um, and things like that. There's, um, that's really the gist of it. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything here. And we did used to have a, um, a waste disposal day in Summersworth, but that's now Dover. So just updating in general terms like that. Um, I will take the opportunity to let you know that um, the transfer station really recently purchased scales. One of the reasons that the budget is um, on track to be overexpended for waste is because when people dispose of demolition debris, we charge people by volume, but we are charged by the weight. So we have purchased a set of scales and the transfer station will be starting to implement the use of the scales to get a sense of what things weigh so that um, when somebody comes in with a mattress, for example, right now that's a set fee. It'll no longer be a set fee, but it'll take the transfer station some time to get a sense of what is the range that one might be charged when disposing of a mattress, because um, they do vary by, um, their weight can vary considerably. So that's part of the fee structure change that is likely to be implemented um, in, in a number of months. And again, um, these changes as proposed will not be finalized until the vote of town meeting in March. So this is just a preliminary public hearing. Does anybody have any questions and comments about the proposed changes to the transfer station ordinance? Okay then. I guess we can leave the public hearing open for, well, you have your meeting is posted as immediately following, so I suppose we can close the public hearing, and if you're ready, we can move on to the regular business portion of the meeting. Thank you guys for coming. You're welcome to stay. Thank you for your input. The, um, the And this is the agenda for the regular business Thanks, portion of the meeting, and those are the travel Space there, the road would jet out, so it's one lane, 
with a parking space, and the sidewalk would come to a kitty corner up to Main Street, so you actually have a wider uh, space between Fourth Street and the, the front steps now, and the tanks would go on the ground there. Um, if we don't want to do that, then the other alternative is to place two large tanks above ground next to the building, which I personally I don't think it's, it's going to be an eyesore too. I'd be concerned that the, you know cigarette butts and whatnot are going to be tossed at it, or whatever the case might be. So. So you're, you're replacing the sidewalk, and that's where they're going to go. Right. Instead of the sidewalk the coming up straight now, we would eliminate the last parking space at the very top, and, and the, the road, the road would come up and would jet out and go over, and then you would have that parking space uh, where the sidewalk currently is, and a little bit of space where the flowers are now to be able to dig a hole and put the propane tanks in there. Right now, the, the generator is diesel? Diesel, yes. Is there a reason that you're, you want to shift away from that? Well, the, uh, but this is just exploring. The well, propane is cleaner and propane um, um, less maintenance issues down the road as opposed to a diesel generator. Is, is, is propane cheaper than diesel? It's, it's going to be about the same. It's about the same. Okay. Diesel's going to go up next year. I have a 2020, so it's in January 1st. Anyone? Yeah. on their oil news, so uh, <laughs> it's, um, propane's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, so you but can't put it on the other side of the building. No. Yeah. Okay, because we don't own that property beyond your, we're right heading down here. towards the red apartment house. You're yeah. talking about right out back here? Oh yeah, I'm talking about right out back here. There's, yeah. you're, you're, there's, there's probably 10 feet from the back of this building where the addition is to their driveway, and I don't know exactly where that line is. Okay. Um, it's going to be a week to go up anyway. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And, and the propane tanks have to be at least 10 feet away from the source. So, okay. So it would not fit in the existing configuration that we have there now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that once we do something there, any that entire wall is going to be rebuilt anyway because it's falling apart. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't put together correctly in the first place um, when it was done. And like I said, like I mentioned last time, all that shrubbery and the trees and what have to, have to come out of there. So whether we would have the highway department do that or whether we'd have you know, an outside source redo the, redo the wall, I don't know. So when you say the wall, you mean the wall? The retaining goes. wall that goes up, that's underneath, oh. along the sidewalk and then it's underneath the, 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 the generator. Yeah. I don't know how, how, does something, how do they fill an in-ground tank? Is there well, the cap is at, up? Yeah, the cap is at ground level. It sticks okay. up above ground. Just, just a little, little bubble. Okay. And they open it up, shh, fill it in. Okay. Okay. Um, Actually, you can never refill it. Free fill it. Well, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you take it up and put it up. Take it up and replace yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of it. I'm a tank, so I don't know. So, um, so that's obviously a, a major undertaking to, mm -hmm. to do propane. Yeah. So I just, I, I want to let you know that's what the options are. Um, as we think about this project. So, but the only way to put any ground tank is to eliminate one parking space, jet out the sidewalk, redo the sidewalk, and dig a hole. But the current sidewalk is not. So would the sidewalk be where the parking space is? Yes. Because you can put it over the tanks. That, I mean, the tank is going to be underneath with that parking space that you're going to give up. Or is it going to be up this way? It's going to be, it's going to be closer to the building. Okay. But in order to, uh, to dig, and yeah. have it out of the room, uh, the sidewalk will need to be jutted out okay. as well and eliminate that parking that one, space. One space. Will you miss the space? Not really. I mean, they, got, they can do this parking lot over here to go yeah. down to you if they needed yeah. to. I mean, it sounds like a plan to me, as long as you're thinking that we're not going to miss the spot. And, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just thinking about the ancillary costs of d d who digs. We dig? Like, who puts in the tank? Townsend put the tank in. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so we went to Townsend, or okay. Dave Richard, or Gagney, or whatever. Um, but the cost of rebuilding the wall, like, is that? That would probably be on us. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean the Burks that there now, I, I believe they were purchased at Home Depot or someplace like that. They were actually built by a civilian. 
former select board member uh, who put that put the wall up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's like. But with any brick wall or block wall like that, um, you know, we've had an issue since day one because you never put the seams together. You know, you have to have a stagger. That's what holds them together. And uh, so now it's going to begin to blow up. But of course, the roots on the tree help push it out as well. Yeah, and so that's so, so we do know that at some point within a couple of years, anyway, we, we need to do that whole retaining wall system. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's possible the highway department can do it, but I, I don't want to put. Any words in, in George's mouth? He's itching. He's itching. Yeah. Yes, well, come on up. I got to say, we're talking about it. I've worked in that propane industry for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Had they just talked about could they move with the paint over? I can't remember. I mean, oh, yeah. Above ground? Either or. Where are you, you going to put it up there, though? Well, it's all parking lot. Right, right, but you can put them right behind the wall. Where there's no building involved. How much property do we have? You're talking about above ground, or they can put an above ground tank. That takes parking from please. No, no. Behind the wall. What wall are we talking about? The 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 parking lot. Oh, you're talking the back. Off the cliff. Yeah, I park away from the parking lot. That can be. I mean, I live. They always seem to put the tanks when I used to live the furthest away, mm -hmm. the end of the hose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So you always end up dragging a whole bunch of holes. I don't know if that was an option they even thought about. Well, no, because if you have to put the tanks in the building, now you're talking about digging up tanks somewhere. Pipe can from that run, point, pipe can be run along the building. You know. Outside, not underground. Along the building. Against the how, how do you prevent them from getting hit by a snowblower or a plow? Or no, no. You can run that right up along the Oh, on the side of the building. Mm -hmm. right. I don't mind about coming up the side of the second story of my house. Mm -hmm. So, it, 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 whether that's because it's running a generator to higher pressure, if they can do it or not. But I know when we delivered gas to places, the tanks were quite a ways from the source a lot of times. And it's just another option I was you know, thinking of. So, it was on the other side of the fence, and how do we get the uh, line from the other side of the fence? Through the parking lot, no, you go down the back side of the building. Back side, no. Well, you can run the line over the top of the garage doors. Mm -hmm. Right to your source. Mm -hmm. I'd like to call town plan and see if there's some other. Yeah, I mean, that's just another, just a thought, because I know when we used to do it, we put tanks, people don't want the tanks close to the house. Never do it. Yeah. You know, they always want it as far away as possible. But the only problem with that is on the other side of the fence, I don't know how much land is actually well, that's, that's, you know, yeah. we have to look at something to find that out, I guess. But, I but that's stuff. having, but your proposal is having outdoor tanks, above ground tanks. I mean tanks, above ground tanks, tank. it should be no problem. Mm -hmm. They can drag the hose down that driveway and fill it. Well, I can certainly ask Townsend if that's feasible with this, uh, the piping is the only thing that's more expensive. Yeah. So what's the but difference between doing what Bob's proposing and what you're suggesting? The tanks what is the better? Digging. You know, it's cheaper you to put it above ground. Yeah. You're not redoing the sidewalk. It's going to put a solid basin for them, that's all. Right, you put a pit, they put either a pad or they can put blocks mm -hmm. and secure the tank on the outside of the building. They can strap it down even if they have to. I got mine sitting on the grass. Mm -hmm. But is yeah, it right better up, to right have it there. underground, or is it better to have it above? I don't, I don't know what. They have wool. You know, security-wise, it's better to have it underground. You know, maybe tamp it with or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm thinking now, on the other side of the, of the fence over here and there, I mean, the ground goes like this. Right, the building. But again, I don't know they how. Can be, the tank can be going to be 10 feet from the building. A hundred gallon uh, or the big, big tank. Gallon tank. Yeah, you, you want a large, large oh, tank. You want the great big one. Yeah, ten, ten, ten feet from the, the minimum. They can put a thousand gallon tank out there. They have to. The line is away from the building. You know, and I, like I said, if, if you had, I don't know how much property you could behind that wall. That's the only other problem. Yeah. Don't know for sure. But it's another option. All right, we got all into the worry about it, I guess. Yeah. Must have generated goes to put between now and then, but, but yeah, I, I got, I'll check the town and see if that's an option, and scout out some areas over there that uh, to see if it's feasible. But 
I know on the other side of the, once you get on the other side of the wall, you know, the ground goes like this. So there's really no a decent level spot to put it in. I guess my other question is, so we've estimated the cost of the generator at 30000 Do we include that? Let's say if we put it underground on the side, do we include that expense? We would need to know what all the ancillary costs are yeah. so that they're included in the ward article. Yeah. So I think we have some but there's going to be costs regardless of which direction you go, yeah. right? I mean, you still have to pay the installation of the tanks and stuff, right? Well, right, but going underground or how much are you rebuilding the ground in order to create a support for it to sit on are all going to be more money than if you were just putting a tank above ground where it's already level, you know? And, and, and also rebuilding the sidewalk and what it would cost to replace the wall on the sidewalk over there would be more than if you had a place that was just already level and available. So we just want to make sure that we're calculating all of everything, mm -hmm. everything the more article. So you have time to think about it, but um, we just want to make sure we get budget numbers for whichever way you all decide to go. So you're saying, though, that over here, we propose that you could put a tank. There isn't room to put an underground tank. There may not be room to put an above ground tank. I'm just going to oh. go on the side. You know, you've got to still be so many feet from the coffee line. Yeah. Okay. So there's more investigation. Okay. Some. Oh. Yeah. But I just want to let you know that's another option about putting it over there. That's the right. Nice. Yeah. I mean, the easiest thing to do is just replace it with another diesel generator that sits on top of the, on top of the tank like we have now. Mm -hmm. That's by far the easiest. Is there a difference in price between a propane one and a diesel they're, they're, one? They're pretty compatible. Okay. And then you could just replace what you have there with, with a um, diesel one Correct. without doing anything. We still have to they, do the they, retaining they, wall, right. but you're saying it's kind of collapsing. Right. They would actually use the same cement pad that's there now. The building would go away. So. Even uh, with a diesel one? Yeah, even with a new diesel one. Because it's, it's, it's just a great big box. like. Like, like, like a generator you have, mm -hmm. uh, an automatic generator you have behind your house. Yep. So it just sits in a big box. Yep. It doesn't need to have a building like, like this one here does. Because yeah. so, there's improvements that right. they've made. It's all self contained. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right, let's, um, let's do a little more homework and then you can let us know when we make a decision. But then, yeah, we would need to know what all of the installing costs would be. Okay, great. Thanks, George. Traffic signs and cones, no safety. Sure. I posted right here. Every every time we have a storm and we, we end up having roads closed and trees down and roads down, you know, we just do not have enough cones. We do not have enough, enough appropriate track uh, road closed signs, road closed ahead signs. But in the case, <coughs> so I, I spoke with the highway folk. I spoke with the fire the fire chief and. Um, you know, we're all in the same predicament. We don't, we don't have enough equipment uh, for those things. Um, I'm suggesting that we have some money in the FEMA reimbursement account line item from the March storm of 2018 uh, that came in this year, six thousand and almost seven thousand dollars. That we use some of that to purchase cones, road close signs. Um, men working signs, road, road uh, detours, and things like that. Uh, so I, ha I have a list uh, downstairs. And probably at the next meeting, um, I'll bring the list to, to the board and with a price. We're looking about four, $4,4500 for cones for all, all three departments. And then um, uh, most of the signs would go to the highway department, uh, emergency scene head for the police, emergency scene head for the fire department. So it's about $4,500 all together. So I just want to make you aware of that. So, so there is money that came in as income this year from FEMA for that storm last year. So, recommend we use some of that money. Okay. okay. Any comments on that, Joe? Any comments? No, on that? no I, I think it's a good idea. We actually we, we looked at a bunch of times. Any comments, Mark? I've already had that conversation with Chief Duke. So yes, we're you're all on go. board. You're all on the we're same all page. All on the same page. Yeah. Okay. okay. And the last line that I have for the board is a uh, personnel matter, so I'll read 
request that we go into non-public. Mm -hmm. And we'll go into non-public personnel. Would you like for me to go? Oh, that can be answered. Okay. Roll call. Jessica. Yes. Yes. Miles. Yes. 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 The problem. My the problem is, is down east. East. the problem is somebody else tying into another company's product. There's, there's, there's a liability there. there. That's when right. something goes wrong, that's it's exactly it's why I said that. that. All right. I'd like your comment on But that. you can totally switch it. Well, dumb bodies, not. Well, I, I was called intention. them Brock. They're not my friends. They've done work for us before, and they said we'll do it in January. All right, That's so right. we are yeah. back. I just want them to move it. We are back. Where are we? Um, all right, so this is gone, so fire. Mark. I don't have too much, just a couple of things to take mm -hmm. Are we back on? Then? Hmm? Are you going somewhere? Am I? Oh, did you go? Oh, did you? Are you on the phone? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yes, I knew. Very good, though. I'm on the third call in the last half. So. Oh, okay, wow. Mm -hmm. well, is. First thing I have is uh, purchase order number 1760. And it's to Ken Desmond. It's for our annual pump service testing of the fire trucks. They have to be done every year. This guy is he's from Bath, Maine. He's a retired chief from someplace. He lives up there and that's his kind of his business now. He's done our trucks for everything he did when he the area up there. So he came down last week, both trucks passed as they normally do. So uh, his fee for the day to do take care of our two trucks is uh, three hundred and sixty four dollars. I move purchase order 1760 to Ken Desmond for annual pump testing and the amount of $364. Second, then. All right. Any discussion? No. Discussion. no. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Exactly that reason. That's always been my thing. 
because I know when I came into this position, I think it's like seven years ago, there wasn't even a job description for the fire chief. I wrote my own and submitted it because before I was going to accept the position, I wanted to know my responsibilities were going to be. Of course, I understood what they were, but I wanted to know what the town was expected. But I also wanted to know what the town was going to do for me. You know, am I going to be hung out to dry? You know, I have discussions with, with Caroline and whatnot. And then, a lot of us through the municipal association and whatnot, you have their backing and whatnot, but still that's not the, the catch-all. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make sure I was going to have, if something doesn't go quite right, you know, how do we work through those problems? Mm -hmm. So, as an elected person, where does that draw, where is that line drawn in the sand? So we don't have as much protection to let you know. <laughs> I understand that. So that's kind of where I was headed with some of that stuff, because on, on that side, you know, because I sat down and I actually, you know, when we were going to have a discussion, I had a pros and cons list, and I didn't have a lot of pros in the um, voting side. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I guess just tradition, and some people like that, they don't ever want to see it changed, and that's all they do. I know, I, I can guarantee people that walk into this room and vote, and they see a name down there, it says fire chief, they don't know who it is. No. I don't know who I am, I don't know who anybody is. Oh, I'll check his name there. That's right. all you get. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know if that really is yeah. just the right way to do things. You, well, want. Sure. you want somebody that you know it fits the bill for what you want to run your fire department. There's so many standards nowadays. And I know you have them now because you see them all the time as the administrator to run a small town. Mm -hmm. It's the same kind of hoops you got to do to be able to run and manage a fire department. All the qualifications, all the training, all the research, all the stuff that you need to do to take your federal level to the state level, just to us. So much more than has ever been. I don't have time yeah. to do that yeah. stuff. I want to. Yeah. So I want to go on this call, but I can't. I guess. Yeah. But that's <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your thoughts of residency? That's the that's the other big thing. I I think you need, and when you start looking at the voting end of it. In my opinion, you really need to have somebody that's in town. You can't have somebody that's going to run for this and, and they're going to live over in Rochester or something like that. When you meet them on a, on a moment. Yeah, so I mean, that's, that's my opinion. You need but to that, at least. That, that also really shrinks down your available candidates or something like that. You know, because I'm going to be presenting the same thing when I sit down in front of the budget committee. There used to be a time when there was 15 guys who used to live down there on the fire department. Yeah. Now there's five. Mm -hmm. You know, even their availability is not that great. So. I would think you'd want somebody, or if not, if it's going to be like that, you have to make some sort of stipulation that they're within a certain amount of time to be able to get here. Because uh, most places, most every town that has a fire chief someplace that I know around here, the cities, they all have to live within their community. Yeah. Well, police chiefs and stuff also. So I think just because, you know, so many emergencies arise, you've got to be right there to respond and take care of it and whatnot. So. Oh yeah, I'll be there in 20 minutes. I got to drive in from Milton or something. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's that would be my only concern. That we want to make sure that we have a restriction about yeah. the amount of miles or whatever. Well, if you can, if you can, if you can if you get somebody that's right in town, then you have. I, I feel that would be the best thing for you to do is to put some sort of stipulation that you have a certain diameter, a certain mm -hmm. perimeter on where they're going to be. Because I know when I was in Dover, all of the chief has to live in the town, but even to. Uh, you know, in the fire department, you have to live within 10 minutes, 10 miles of City Hall, mm -hmm. just to be on the fire department as a member. Mm -hmm. So you put a, a marker on City Hall, you can go 10 miles out and make that big circle. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't hit your town, you can't live there. Mm -hmm. wow. Well, it's all about Because they want you to meet yeah. when there's an emergency and you get to get recalled and come back. You know, you can't be two hours away. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's places sense. like Pease and other fire departments, Nashua, some of the larger ones. I know guys that work on national fire departments that live up uh, up towards Rumney and areas like that. They go in, they do their shift, do they go home. It's no big deal. But in the other ones where they rely on a lot of mutual aid and a lot of callbacks, you got to have your people there to be able to respond in a very timely manner. Mm -hmm. So that's the issue that we always face here. So that's another kind of stipulation. And I'll make it tough sometimes. Because, I mean, but the town itself has been lucky for a lot of years, from Brownie to Harry to Spinney to myself, all the time. We've all been employed and all got fire service background, so that's been able to carry on. I can see a few of those maybe down the road, but after that, I don't know where it goes. Mm -hmm. There's just not a lot of folks to drop on. That pool's getting smaller and smaller. 
and not having a full grand chief. It would be hard to say that you have to relocate to our town. <laughs> that would be true. Well, 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 I mean, that, yeah, I, I I mean, mean that's realistic. Were, yeah, oh, yeah. If, yeah. if you were sitting yeah. here with the package that you were going to offer somebody now that I now encompass, you won't get anybody. Right. I guarantee you, you will not find anybody. Ain't going to happen. There's, there's places that have full time employment jobs around here, and they can't even find cartoons for certain things that make a hundred grand a year. They can't even fill their positions because they won't come down for whatever the various reasons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they don't have that yet. Fortunately, right now you're still in a, in a comfortable position, but that's. And like you had said, and we talked about that's some of the things when you start looking at it and you want to switch it over to appointed, uh, some of those stumbling blocks mm -hmm. right there. Right, then it needs to go in the belt, right? It to, does, to yes, get, it does. And also, if it were to pass, and if he were to run and be reelected, he would remain elected for the full 2020 right. year until the until March of 21. If they were to both no. pass, then in March 21 is when the change would take place. No, if nothing else was to come about, as far as you know, maybe it isn't quite the right time yet to, to switch it over to appointed. Change it from one year to three years. Yeah. Something like that, so a guy's in a position, he's always going to be there long enough that he can actually make an impact. You can do something and get things done. But if you get a bad one, then you're stuck for three years. Look, look it up. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I understand. Two and a half more years. <laughs> I gotcha. Sometimes a yearly thing on that is not a bad thing. I understand. But that's the only other alternative yeah. sometimes. That's it. I mean, yeah. You've been lucky again, there's not been a revolving door in the position. It's like, right, it's like it's a he's been here forever yeah. also. So you have that stability. Things are able to move along. You've got that watchdog taking care of everything. But if you've a different person in here every year for any kind of time, it, it, there's nothing positive going to come out of that. Because every time you get something rolling, you're done. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have to run again. Oh. Okay, just wanted to have your input. Um, appreciate it. Direction we're going to go. Anyway. Well, you still have to sign up. Yes. Well, that's, that's well, mandatory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. You, this year you yeah, still have to run this one. I'm not yeah. going anywhere for a bit, so it's 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 fine. But I just think that's something that the, you know, I don't know what the you know municipal association and stuff like that what they tell you. Those kind of things. Those are problems that they can go that far and even care. But like I said, I think we're on one or two towns in the state that still do. I, I think we've about business. covered them in the conversation. No, I don't think they do it about three years. No. It's cheap. It's cheap. three years, yeah. Mm -hmm. But he, I, he's elected. That's, I don't know any of the others, though. Is it somebody who was by Swan? They're on up. They're on up. They're appointed? The Emanuel's the chief that's been appointed for a while. Ever since they separated one from the UNH, their own fire department, just became their own fire department. Of the New Durham. Oh, New Durham. Yeah. Oh, New Durham. Yeah, New Durham, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't think they are anymore. I think it's they are fine. as well. I think they are because they had some, uh, some issues with the, with the chief a little while ago about him not performing his duties. Yeah. All right. Well, um, we'll keep you posted and let you know what this is going to be. Okay. Thank you for your input. Yep. All right. Um, I don't know if anybody's seen us the last few days. The fire station has been completely painted on the outside. Mm -hmm. and, and, up and I think it's very great. Right. It's blinded. It is blinded. You should be uh, working on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's all squared away. Um, and just as positive input from um, our event that we held on Saturday, um, I had more positive comments because of the paved parking lot um, than I really expected. Mm -hmm. So the folks that are our normal, regular residents that come to that event, they were, they were kind of blown away by it. So that that was a very positive thing. So I just wanted to pass that along. Thank you. It has been well, well, I mean, everybody was kind of involved. Mm -hmm. They you know, getting mm -hmm. the funding, decided to go and push it forward and get it done. So uh, the town folks that I ran into all well, saw it and understood it, and they were impressed. Yeah. Good to hear. Three. All right. Okay. All right. That's all that I have. The only thing that's going to be coming down the road for us, as far as uh, you know, again, I've kind of managed.
manage my budget in a lot of different ways, but I tried to spend more up front this year than I have in the past, so it was weird to kind of the end to do things. And uh, I think what you told me I was at 58 or 68 percent. The biggest expenditure that we have left between now and the end of the year, as always, is gear. What? Gear. Oh. Protective gear. And and one thing I want to do is normally I try to get two sets done and, and 3,000 plus a set. I'm going to go for three this year because I actually have a new member who's going through his training right now. He finishes up in about a month. He's on Pine Street. And he's got a full-time job someplace else, but he's wanted to get into the fire service, maybe make a transition down the road. But that's another addition that I've had in the town. So he's kind of using some gear that's right on the cusp of not being serviceable anymore. So I'm going to make sure he gets a new set of gear. It's kind of a reward for being a townie. And the other thing is he's very active. He's been on all the calls. Um, he has a CDL, so I can start using him to drive the tank truck because I'm very limited on those operators. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of positive that he has brought to the plate and offered for us. So I'm going to turn around and throw some right back to him. So, And I know I'm a little short on that line, but I'm going to push it over a little bit just for that reason. And I'm on that way more stuff. It's still going to be within my budget, just may not be within a PPE line item, mm -hmm. but we can draw from some of the others. We kind of had that discussion. So that's hardly two sets of gear. Right. That's not counting if I got to buy boots and gloves and hoods and everything else that goes with the paraphernalia to make an ensemble. So that's something else that I'm actually going to address on Wednesday night too in my uh, budget committee presentation. So still plenty of hose money. Well, that's a set of gear right there. Yeah. That's what I'm one of the ones I'm going to. And some other line items that have your mark that we haven't delved into too far. So. And so I want to give you the heads up that we'll be drawing stuff from other places just to, to meet that goal. <coughs> Unless you tell me no. If you tell me no, then that's good. <laughs> well, we'll reallocate so it shows in those lines. Right? Yes. Okay. Good. Oh, 
Um, purchase order 1773 to Chadwick Samosa. Chadwick Bayros. Summer Chadwick Bayros for one Doomglass. Parts for the truck for $800. Parts, excuse me, backhoe. Second time. Alright, any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. How much was it? Uh, $800. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, okay. I don't know what the shipping was, we had to put it up to $8. Is the fourth? Yeah. One piece of glass is coming from overseas. Seriously? She's made overseas. Oh, you can't just buy something? No, it's uh, they're all pre-drilled and it's flat glass, but it's, mm. it's got to fit. You know, they can do that and all that, so. Okay. And I need some cutting edges for our plows uh, out of the maintenance budget. Uh, carbide blades and the sander chain for the small sander in the dumpster and metal bed replaces getting brand so it takes and breaks during the storm and they will change it. Mm -hmm. So I got a part of us carbide blades, sander chain and shaft rollers for the sander for a total of eleven hundred fifty nine dollars from two alley and a quarter. I will move purchase order 1772 to Allied Equipment for $1,159.01 for um, equipment. Seconded. All right. Any further discussion? No. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. aye.
it shuts off automatically because you're not wasting salt. It's all part of the green pro snow program. You can put that in, in the spring or when they get it. So they get, it takes a couple, three days to get to put, change the system over. The truck is already equipped with the manual system. And I said, we're not delaying the truck anymore. We need to have the truck. We can deal with that. You give us paperwork saying that the class come in or else in the spring of next year when things are slower, we can bring that truck in and have it fixed. Great. It's part of the cost of the truck. Right. right. Okay. There's no extra charge. Okay. So why didn't it get ordered? Good question. Okay. I had uh, many good questions for that company, but I get it's going to be two weeks every time I talk. And I'm tired of two weeks. I'm tired of three months, four months, five months. There's no reason for that as far as I'm concerned. So uh, just in case you're wondering, which I'm not going to be here probably to order the next truck, but they ought to put a stipulation in there that they have a deadline. Yeah. Definitely a lesson learned. Yeah. I mean, a lot of towns went to win that because they knew if they ordered a truck, the chassis would delay one thing or another. But mm -hmm. this truck is built, so it was just a matter of a dump truck situation. Okay. And, you know, if you put a, they usually meet their deadlines. They do for Dover. So, mm -hmm. you know, maybe they're a bigger town, but, you know, if you sign a contract, you should be able to fill that contract. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Right. So do we have an estimated delivery date? Or? We're supposed to get called back to make sure things are in place this week. It's going to the paint shop, so hopefully next week we'll have the truck. I didn't think it needed to be painted. The body has to be painted. Oh, okay. The truck itself is painted. It's, oh, but okay. The body's going to be primed. They add the parts, like if you want certain lights for like the spreader, and you know, so you can see what's going on. So that's a, that's part of it. It becomes your truck. You know, so they want to make sure you put they put stuff on where you want it before they paint it. Okay. So I'm hoping by the end of the week we get a chance to look at it and they get it to the paint shop and we get it next week. I mean, the guy from Freightliner is that's beside himself. He said they of course they've had the truck for a year and they haven't collected the dime on it. So well, they don't you know, and, 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 and I'm not blaming them. You know, they've been on it just like I have. We've been on their case, but it's just you know, the lack of help, that's, that's not our problem. Mm -hmm. You know, the truck's sitting there, you have a contract. But unfortunately, the contract's with three line, it's not with us. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Well, hopefully, we don't get any snow until we get it. Well, it's something on Friday. Friday, yeah, Friday and morning. Next Tuesday. One, Tuesday. Tuesday. Are you serious? Yeah, <laughs> that's what they're saying. That's what yeah. we're going to do. We'll plow snow like we always do. Okay. <laughs> they have other. Might be a little cool in the back, oh, but we'll blow snow. Oh my goodness. All right. We'll get the pickup now. That's back up, and we're not going to have an amount of snow that's going to, you know, set us behind. Yeah. We may be a little bit. A little, pick up a couple shovels. We, get, we may be a little slower on salting because we're down the sand, but that's all right. All right. We'll get it done. Okay, so are you all done on your stuff? You got stuff. Okay, yep. Drainage at the Legion. Drainage at the Legion. I think that project should be looked at as far as replacing the pipe that comes through there. But my thought was that we could run a ditch line around the back of the building. And so the water would run off into the ditch down on Foundry Street, like it should be doing, would eliminate some of their problems. However, I'm being told that it's on water department property, so we, they have to have a meeting. So we're not going to have time to do that this year. Okay. Well, it's all the Legion property. Right. Well, I mean, it's all right. on private. So you need to do the work on on water district pro property, and you need to access it By the via Legion, Legion property. property. So you really need to notify and get permission from both, both of them, right. and the commissioners aren't meeting until the twentieth. So, the, so the land beyond the parking or the road behind the Legion is is sewer. All, all the sewer. land, all of the not developed land behind the Legion is water sewer property. Oh, okay. Okay, so, but we're going to fix that culvert anyway next year, right? That's in the plan? The one down on... Well, is the, the one culvert that's is the problem? The, we, we got to find out what it's going to cost to fix and take that pipe up, yes. But is that the plan to fix that next year? Well, if we can. Okay. You know, if we get to, i, I got to have a look at it. I, I have somebody look at it and see what it would cost to, to do that project. It's a big machine, a bigger machine than what we have to get in there and do it. It's in the woods. I don't know how big the pipe is. Okay. But uh, it's got to be looked at. And I'm not sure if Hoyle Tanner probably looked at that pipe before. I'm not, you know, that's part of that stormwater system, so. I don't know what this, you know. I don't know. Um, 
Hoyle Tanner, I don't think, looked at the stormwater system. We had others look at the stormwater system, but I don't think we have any data on no, what you need. There's probably nothing there, but there is definitely a pipe that is an issue there because the water is coming out of the ground. And so the problem is we, we have the same problem for another winter. Mm -hmm. That water is going to flood in that back mm -hmm. area and they're going to be upset and, and more to our concern it's going to undermine the foundry. Mm -hmm. So I've put a call into the Legion to um, try to explain the problem mm -hmm. and explain the timing problem and they can work separately mm -hmm. with the Water Sewer Commission and do the work mm -hmm. um, or you know the Water Sewer Commissioners on their own can I don't know, they, they can work that out, but I, I just don't see how, they, they ought to at least be on notice, and I, I just don't know, particularly with snow coming, which may not last, but with them not meeting until the 20th, mm -hmm. that probably by the time they meet, we may be engaged in snow. It's tenuous, we'll see. Mm -hmm. I, I can still send a letter to both the Water Sewer District and the Legion, and let them know what's going on and that we've got a time constraint and we'll do it if we can do it and see if the commissioners will give us I mean, the permission. A ditching should have been maintained by them. It was, I mean, it runs around the back of their property. Right. You know, I mean, yep. I believe it should have been an issue they take, they would have taken care of all of their own problem. Okay. I mean, so they ought to at least know that, that mm -hmm. there's something that they can do, do to help and, themselves and, and to yeah. try to find a different way to plow. Yeah, yeah, because it's kind of, it's their land and we're, we're doing something, or we're proposing to do something on their land versus town land, so it I mean, makes it complicated. Looking at the stormwater issue too, I mean, yep. if there's a broken pipe that causes this issue, then whose problem is it? Well, we and that's the only that, reason right? why I would suggest we get involved at all is just because the culvert would be our problem right. that you know may be exacerbating it. Otherwise, between two other separate parties, I, I wouldn't propose that we get involved. Right, but I think because of that, we, we kind of have to. Well, and we also fix that. Yeah. Yeah. So if we fix that. Hopefully, that resolves the problem. Right, but it would still be better to try to get in there this year if we can, because it's the winter when it rains in January and the ground's frozen that. Well, okay, so I, I, I think the question really is, with snow coming on Friday and then again potentially on Tuesday, is the board going to entertain making an exception to the ordinance and allowing them to cut into the road after November 15th? Because I think if the answer is no, then that probably negates the need for a meeting and we can let them know that and have a meeting in spring. Closer to well, I think they still have to have a meeting, though, because they, I mean, well, maybe they don't need to All of a sudden, it's November, they want to do this. I mean, they had Well, because they got denied. Oh, yeah. That's why. Because the budget committee voted no. I got there late. Yeah, I So they can't have the extra funds. But they also haven't gone and gotten another quote or anything. When you're talking about hundred something thousand dollars, I thought it was 120, but I think it's 103. I think the quote is they they proposed 106 in yeah. the agenda that they dispersed. So I mean you gotta. We're getting that freezing. I mean freezing temperatures and stuff. You start digging and you're gonna get good paving and stuff. Though. We. Or at or at all. Right? I mean paving. Apparently it's they put a line inside. They're gonna be inserting the pipe inside the pipe that's existing. Yes. System, the new way to if everything happen. works the but, way it's right. supposed to work. Correct. But they also have to. They have to make oh, holes, they, oh, that and they, yeah, the cool movie way. that I saw them at the meeting, they weren't small holes. Well, right, so so I <laughs> guess it's as simple as the board deciding... Whether or not we're going to allow paving after, what is it, the 15th? November 15th. Yeah. But you don't even have to allow it at any point now. If snow is forecast, then that's going to impede your ability to repave. Right, right. Well, Laurie, what do you guys think? I, I didn't read the email. I saw there was an email about it. I didn't read it. Um, Let me just, I, can I give you a little of my information from attending the last meetings? <clears throat> there was a lot of discussion about the project and a lot of controversy because the budget committee didn't bring it forward. But one of the things that was a gift, in my opinion, was that the 
residents who were there said that they are okay to wait till spring, knowing that there's a project, a plan. Yeah. The, the worst part of it all was there wasn't a plan. Right. And, and please correct me if I'm wrong. Am, am I saying it correctly? That they were, they were saying, we can wait until spring, knowing like what we know what's going to happen, and get it approved at the March meeting, and having the funds, and not getting these big, um, uh, what do they call them? Uh, when the uh, water people are going to have to pay something up Oh, front. the special, this the special guess, assessment. You know, yeah. they were supposedly going to have to pay it by December of this year in yeah. order to do it. And, it, and we're talking about two or two or three hundred dollars. And now if it goes through and gets approved in March to go forward with it, then that it would just be going across for four months, correct? I mean, you still have to pay it because you still have to well, come up with the money. Well, that's debatable um, and to be determined. The, yeah. You know, um, the chairman was talking about was talking a five-year loan, loan, but yeah. the language of the article can be changed on the floor. So yeah. how, you know, it doesn't have to be a loan. The people present wanted it to stay um, as a special yeah. assessment yeah. broken out over four payments throughout the year. So that all can be decided, but... Um, yeah, it's it. They did say that they could wait. It had been going on for a number of years, and they just wanted a plan. Right. So, so I felt good about them. That they, and they really, they didn't have to say that, um, you know. And so I feel good about it. So I don't really think it's as emergency as it was first led to believe. And the timing I mean, the is not good. The schools got to be involved. I mean, there's, there's a whole bunch of people that got to be involved with this project. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can't shut down water during a school day. Well, they have this plan to hook them up to a water, but I'm not sure that that is... Well, they put above ground water lines in the winter. Well, I know. They I know. Freeze. It will heat the lines. And then they also, you know, if you wanted to replace your pipe from your house to the uh, to the road, I mean, that was the perfect timing, but that's on the residents as well. So not a lot of time for them either. To to well, plan for that. And the school, the school, I don't know what they're piping. Well, and the like. school had not budgeted for that, and the no, residents weren't aware no. of that. So I think we're, I, I think that we would be okay to delay it, and I, you know, so I would say we should, we should hold to our ordinance and our policy. Okay, so, um, are we going to then suggest that we um, that the commissioners hold a meeting in the spring, or that we don't feel a need to go to a meeting until the spring, or do you still want to make an effort to attend that meeting, either yourself or sending me? You mean on one Friday night? Yeah. I already replied that I would be there. Is it, isn't it just to show what they actually do? Ken Berry's the company's going to do the job, right? Well, that's the one quote they Well, that's received, the only but, one quote they okay, received. But, I mean, they're, they're just showing you... Well, people just had questions. Well, people just had questions at the meeting, and you know, I mean, it was so better to why have. They, I mean, they could still have that meeting; it wouldn't affect anything. Well, I but is there a benefit the whole to point about now. getting another well, opinion or another I, quote because of the value of it? Especially yeah. the price of that job. Right, but I mean, that's I don't think that's something that we can control by having mm -hmm. the public I, I can't get involved with any of it. So. Yeah, but um, I at least think that we don't have to. We don't have to treat it as an, as much of an emergency, knowing that there's a plan and to follow the right procedures for March. You know, so they'll have to have their hearings and. I mean, we, paid, gonna, we paid last winter with, after the first snowstorm. The code that wrote in last year they, they put that idea in, so we prefer not going that route again. Yeah. Can we leave it unpaid? No, that's well, we can, can, but. Can, but it's, <laughs> The chances of catching a plow and doing damage on a truck. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what are you, you feeling? No, I, I think if... I mean, the residents really don't care. I mean, I would... Well, they, well, they care. But, yeah, they, but, but they were gracious enough to say we can wait a, a, a little longer yeah, now that we know there's a plan, is pretty much what they were saying, before there wasn't one. Um, and it just didn't seem to be a priority. So, Jessica? Yeah, I agree. It makes sense to me. Okay. So, do we need to take an official vote on that?
I think there's a clear consensus. Consensus, so that's okay. So you'll notify them? I will. Okay. All right? Yep. Okay, very good. Yep. All right. Request for a private catch basin. Oh, a bun. Um, I can't remember the guy's General name. John. 126 General John Sullivan has a water problem. Um, what's his name? He called me Norm. Juru called me and asked if he could tie that storm drain into the stormwater system. So I brought it up to the stormwater meeting just in case it's, you know, what their thoughts were on it. There is definitely a water problem up there. Uh, echo, I guess it's on an aquifer, that whole area. So, <laughs> so uh, the water going to end up in our system either way. Me, it's not a big deal, and it's again, it's all in, up to the board to, to allow those things. And I agree with Caroline that there's a uh, what they call it easement, at least so we can act, access stuff. I mean, there's got to be an audience, there's got to be something decided. You know, you're going to do it for one, you're going to do it for everybody. Well, see, so that, that's my concern is you know, once you, once you open the door. The door, you know, it could be. And the other thing is that we don't have any control about what is in someone's garage that water's going to go through and then it's going to go down into the mm -hmm. storm drain. Right? This is not a garage drain. This is out in this driveway. Well, it can go, it, things can flow. If yeah, you're washing I mean, down driveway, your driveway, driveway and it's going to go into, I mean, in his garage and he's going to, or his driveway if he's having a, a leaking oh, problem, and that's going to go in the storm drain. And who's going to be responsible for testing? Who's going to be responsible to make sure it gets clean? Like we have to do because of stormwater. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, why, that's, I, my that's why I brought up the stormwater meeting, and I think that's why it's again your, your choices. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a drain in his driveway that the pipe runs. A pipe runs into our storm system. There's, there's, uh, there's drains up front? There is a, they, they ran a catch basin system. The whole length of that room, I believe, in that. In the when lower half from that. Silver Lane to Pipes Roberts. Pipes 14 feet down. In places. Really? There was Again, a where does it empty? It goes into that, off of Woodland, I believe, in that. Oh, okay. Up back there. Up back there, it runs out across Route 4 and down yeah. into, uh, well, it heads for the river. Yeah. What's the condition? So it's pulling in the driveway? Yes. Is there no other way to address this? Well, the driveway, again, the house is on the bottom of the hill of the driveway. I mean, His driveway is the low point, I don't know and, which and house this the is. neighbor yeah. is up right hill across from the cemetery. Oh, that's Reynolds Hill. Is it Reynolds Hill? Is it Reynolds Hill? Yes. Reynolds yeah. hmm. I don't remember that. Being that way. It's not that low apparently, but it's that it's low enough. Yeah. The water can't run up the driveway to get onto the into the storm system into the road. Can they it's re pitch the driveway. I mean I, no, I, 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 I don't like the, the idea water. either, you know, since now everyone's gonna want to I want to drain the driveway. Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing. But, but <laughs> out back of yeah. out, out back of the house is a wetlands apparently. And you know, when it rains it pours. Well, it's, it's exacerbated much like Cricket Lane by recent winters where we have yeah. rainstorms in January when the ground's frozen and there are snow banks and so there's no place for the water yeah. to go. I mean, let's hope it's colder this year. I don't really hope that, but... Yeah, I do. <laughs> but it just, I mean, it just opens the door. That's the only thing I'm concerned about. And I'm concerned about the testing and making sure yeah, that everything that we have to do as a town, this is now on private property. Right. You're, you're right. We've lost control over. Well, so I would suggest to the board that if you wanted to allow it, that we take the time and um, not allow them to do it until spring and work on an ordinance that regulates when it's allowed and how it's allowed and prescribe that we do get an easement um, on the private property owner's um, land around there so that we can, you know, require that they maintain it, but that we can access it in case they don't and maintain it. And make them liable if there's a leak. And for testing and whatever else we need to research and hold them liable for. So, 
it's another question about do we want to expend the energy in that way for this homeowner and then it may or may not create a precedent or do we just or, or you can just deny the request um yeah I mean the, the way the way we've been moving with policies um, it would be at the bottom of the list of policies but we took a plan for policies no so it might actually I, I would rather handle it that way and then we can address it for everyone right um, you want to think about it? You can certainly have time to think about it. It's yeah. not something that you have yeah. to decide now. Um, of course, his window for doing it, yeah. in, you know, before Frost is, is waning, and that's okay. You still have the right to take your time to think about it. Um, I wouldn't expend the energy to, well, you can think about it. But just know that you know if you were to move toward granting it, I would just suggest that we work on regulations to make sure that we're protecting ourselves from um, whatever might happen. I would say that we notify them that at this point in time, it's not something that we're able to do or allowed to do. We would have to work on a, a process and leave it at that. So I did notify that them of that, and okay. I can just leave it vague as to whether or not we're going to get to it. But at least it's. You know, it's you're going to consider it for now. It, but not current, not this, okay. not this year. It will not happen I, this I year. I honestly don't believe it's the first one on that street this time. Yeah. It's a private contract to put the system in, right? Well, sometimes things happen underground that we don't know about. Yeah. And over the upcoming years with the permit, we'll discover these things. You know, like, but like some pumps are piped into the system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. And, and again, that's not something that we can control. Mm -hmm. if it's, so. All right, so we'll just tell them that we've heard it for now, and um, we may or may not consider it in the future. Yeah, we'd let them know if we do. Okay. Okay. All right. Very good. All right, and then with you. Do you have anything else? I don't think so. You guys? No. 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 Okay. Now, do you want me to get my uh, Wednesday night? Or just that on that. Wednesday night. Budget meeting. You mean transfer stations? Of, I mean, does Ed want you here? Is the key question. Well, you do a pretty good job of keeping that under control. Right? Well, I mean, I'll ask him if he needs me to come. I'll show up. If he wants you to come, I mean, this is this is his department, so to say. But you are ahead of all of it. So if you feel that you should be there, well, you're more than welcome to come. I mean, but if, I mean, if you think Ed can do it, then that's fine too. Been on that side of the table, so. Right, I mean, yeah, it's mostly his responsibility, so, but if you want to, that's fine too. doing a good job over there, so I mean. Yeah. I'll come to the meeting, I'll just, I don't know if it's, if I was. If it's required for you to be there? Right. Well, it's Ed, he's the, he's the transfer station manager, right? Or whatever he's talking about. So. But um, I would just check with him, make sure he's not going to be there. Okay. agenda should be correct. The okay. number in the spreadsheet so that I just gave you the reflects the other percentage we came Well, I'm so. seeing 2509631. That's wrong. Right, but that's not the number. That's well, the right. Because oh, oh, but you're saying what we approved the last time, not what's Right, oh, because okay, the spreadsheet gotcha. you have is gotcha. correct. Okay. So. All right, so we can go ahead and do that part of it and, yep. and get it just make sure where we get there. 
correct version of it. So do you guys want to make a motion to accept that as? Be delighted. Okay. I'll make a motion um, that we propose a bottom line budget of $2,449,217 for the 2020 budget. Seconded. All right. Any further discussion? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. All right, so how about now? Um, that's the color worksheet that you have, which is somewhat filled out with my recommendations. Um, the column all the way to the, the green column is um, what I am proposing for those areas where I am proposing something. Um, I also printed for you what I think that you are thinking about, and you haven't voted on CI on, on Warren article items, but um, I printed that out for you because it does play into this worksheet, because whatever comes from the CIP fund or from another fund, such as the Transportation Capital Reserve Fund, mm -hmm. those are um, those transfers in are considered revenue. So you don't have to decide that part necessarily tonight. We can continue to talk about it, but I just wanted you to recognize that it plays in. So um, right now, um, if, if you want to start at the second to last block on the revenue sheet, um, that, that big number, 229695 that is the total um, based on what I printed out for those warrant articles. So um, as you change your mind for what you're going to fund or how you're going to fund it from those items, that'll change. That's the number that will change. I thought we came up with a number of like 179,000. Well, yes, that's from Capital Reserve only. Well, well, so, it depends on how you fund things. Um, the number on the CIP worksheet is closer to that. It's not even as high as, um, as $200,000. But then there's the sidewalks, which comes from the Transportation Capital yeah. Reserve Fund, which is in there. And then um, you're putting money into the CIP, but also taking money out of the CIP, um, the generator is not at all funded through CIP. So right, um, right now, um, the, the, art, the articulating loader is, is kind of a key factor in, uh, that may be the change in the number two, because that's like $86,000 there. Yeah. If you... We talked about moving out a year. Well, right, but then I heard that it came back up for the budget committee meeting. Oh, so okay. I, I don't know where you're all, you know, since there wasn't an official vote and it was the CIP recommendation, it's in here. But by all means, yes, you did discuss removing it and waiting a year. So so there must be something. I don't have my material from the night we discussed that. But there must be something that fell off here because... Well, the other thing is, don't, so don't confuse this with the number that we're going to put in into oh, okay. CIP. I am confusing it. Okay, I'm good. Because that's money out. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's what I think you're going. Okay, that's so money in from CIP is two twenty nine six ninety five according to the printout of capital items. Um, that's not from taxation because that's not considered income. So if you take out the loader, then you're removing eighty five six ninety five away from that two twenty two. Correct. I mean two twenty nine. Right. And then you're down to one forty four. And by the way, it doesn't include the twenty five thousand dollars for sidewalk, so you'd have to add that in. It's just the CIP. That that line is just the CIP. So in any case, with that being said, we can we can leave that aside for now. Okay. Um, Otherwise, for anticipated revenue, um, we start with a variety of taxes. And for the most part, in the tax box, we don't have any of these taxes anymore. We did away with resident tax. We've never had a yield tax, excavation tax, and such. Um, the land use change tax goes into a different fund. 
and you can you see numbers there because we've budgeted numbers there before um, erroneously because those numbers go into um, another capital reserve fund. So the only amount in this um, section would be the interest and penalties on delinquent taxes. I I propose decreasing that amount, and, and of course it's all up for discussion, but the legislature recently changed the interest rate on delinquent taxes from 12% to 8%. So I would just anticipate that we'll receive less revenue from that. Um, I, I have, you know, there's no way to predict by how much. So, uh, you know, I, I decreased it by the same percentage, 12 moving to 8. So, not to say that that's the correlation, but that's where that number comes from. How much do we usually collect? Do, we, do you know that? Or if usual is the right? Um, I do have that. Because there's a, there's a penalty and interest? Well, yes. For example, if, like, when we had inventory penalties, okay. that's where you can see the income from that, or penalties for paying your resident tax late, for example, would be on that, um, on that line as well. So, okay. Um, I'm good with the 16000 in that case. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the second section, licenses, permits, and fees, I would propose keeping it the same. There's no data to suggest reason for changing any of those. I changed the, um, you all, upon my recommendation, changed the other licenses, permits, and fees, um, 3290, that, the 3290 line, because planning fees are up this year. Um, there's no reason to expect that they would necessarily stay up. Um, so it was revised for this year, but I would I would stay with forty two thousand there. Um, so there you have the subtotal for that section seven hundred and forty one thousand two hundred and fifty. And then the state sources are based on what we know at this point from the state meals and rooms tax um, is is something we get paid in December. We never really know what it is until we receive it. It is. Um, the aggregate collection by the state of all the um, tax on um, hotels and restaurants and then redistributed to all the cities and towns. So I kept that figure the same, knowing well that it's likely to change some, but we have, there's no indication of what it would change to. The highway block grant, however, um, That is, um, we did receive notice from the state about that. So that should be actual. And then the railroad tax there um, has always been that for, for recent memory. So um, on the bottom line, 3379 from other governments, um, the previous 11,900 that was budgeted was the um, potential grant for the radar message board that was not approved, which is why it was decreased by that amount. I put thirty thousand dollars in there for the stormwater asset management grant. That's what that is. Um, so that's two hundred twenty-one thousand three ninety-one for that section. Um, what about the grant that Bob was going to get from his generator? He said he was going to quantum qualify for a grant on the generator. I will ask him about that. I did see that, but I. I I missed that one. Okay. Um, but you can always receive. Always you can always receive it's more. It's I mean, you know, so this is why we do two reports. Yeah. Yeah. So if we don't, we'll propose whatever we propose now, and that will um, inform what the impact will be of the budget, which you never really know until you get to where we are now in the time, in the, you know, where we set the tax rate. So revised estimated revenues as your second shot for getting that. Nonetheless, I will. Um, I don't know if he said was that just for the propane, like burying the propane tank, or was that for the whole installation? No, it's for the generator, mm -hmm. the whole. Thing. Okay. I think you want it here. 
Yeah, I think I... Oh, I think you're right. She wasn't here. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I'll check with him. Yeah. It's from, like, Homeland Security. Right. Okay. Um, you don't need to finalize this. I'm sure the budget committee's going to want to see it as part of the mm -hmm. town budget, but I think we can revisit it. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not worried about doing that right now, but if we know it, we should... Yeah, it just gives you a general sense of, yeah. of where we are. Um, income from departments, I don't see a reason for that to change necessarily. Um, it, and what is that? Well, actually, I take that back. It, it'll change some. So it, this is, um, Parks and Rec is where it's going to change. Um, this is income from registration fees. Oh, oh, oh. So it's, it's police detail, it's transfer station, disposal fees, it's library copy overdue fees, it's parking fees and alarm overdue fees, it's any any income that the other, uh, that departments okay. generate that comes in. So, um, it's so 8,000, eight, Parks and Rec. Um, Parks and Rec is what, um, team. They, well, not even necessarily. So I was going to say you can decrease it by the amount you would receive from team, but you are thinking about increasing your Camp Raleigh tuition. So mm -hmm. I would just say that yeah, it, it may very well be a wash. Team, it might just be a wash. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think about that part. So that's the only part that would change, okay. and that's where that um, figure comes from. Miscellaneous revenues, we. Um, we received more than we had budgeted because of the highway truck that was sold. Um, I brought it back to two thousand dollars because I don't, I don't know that we have any. Get a you know, you, you, there will be a cruiser Which is within two thousand yeah. dollars. I think. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know that we've got anything that's going to generate that kind of income. Um, interest in on, on investments. Um, that's due to the treasurer's handiwork with our primary account there. I, I might reduce the Olympus rates are on the down. That's a good point. Swing, and they would just cut last week. But it's might not be worth I, I don't know. Might not be worth trying to figure out. It's up a couple of thousand dollars. We don't have a full year's worth of data right. under, so, you know, because you you earn more when you have more money, you know, like like it, it ebbs and flows yeah. twice a year. So we don't really, you, so you can't just take one month and multiply it by 12 to right. figure it out. Okay. So we don't really know what a full year is going to generate. Knock it down a little bit, like a grand or yeah, something? Yeah, just to be... Change to 34? Okay. And then other. Other is um, the DRA's term for um, the cell tower lease falls under that. Um, the hydroelectric plant, um, the lease on property, which is the field that's rented to the farmer, and it's also um, two rental fees should somebody pass in the winter. Um, and then Homeland Security or any other kind of reimbursements that way. Um, and then the, the historical committee or, you know, any kind of miscellaneous revenue falls under there. So that's what's comprising that 120. So that's a category total of $156,000. And then you've got your interoperating funds in. So I just wanted to familiarize you all with, with the spreadsheet and where we're at with it. Um, but I would suggest that we, it's up to you. I can wait and find out a generator total. That's only going to improve it, not. That's true. So I would say let's bring forward what we have yep. and then and then we can adjust it if, if we know as long as it's better than Okay. Worse. So the other adjustment to make is the two hundred and twenty nine six ninety five does not include the twenty five from um, for sidewalks because it's a different fund, so I'm gonna add that. Um, we just need to keep in mind that 
if you adjust the capital items that this number is going to change. But again, you're right, you have the second shot with the revised estimated revenue mm -hmm. in September, and that's what that's for. So the new amount for that line is 254,695 for a category total of 254,695. It's not adding the 10 from above, yeah. so it's two, it should be 264. 264. 264,695. And that's a total of um, one million five hundred and sixty two thousand eight thirty six. One million five sixty two eight thirty six. And that's revenue? That's revenue. Mm -hmm. So we need to adopt that as our You can you can choose to adopt it or like a you know, it, it's all about how you feel about, um, what's your confidence with um, those capital items, proceeding with those capital items, and whether or not you want the generator included. So you can approve it now. We can also revisit it later. Well, let's, should we be talking about capital items now, and then we can go back to it? Sure. Okay. So, um, I just want to be clear with the cruiser, the 2019 cruiser. It has to go back on the warrant because of how the article was worded. That if you want to continue to pay future lease payments out of the CIP as was intended, then we have to put an article on the warrant to that effect, and it will come out of CIP. So okay. while it says, you know, it's coming out of CIP, and it is, it's really last year's warrant article that we are correcting that would not have been carried out without this correction. Um, I need to... What happens if it fails? Then you're going to give back the cruiser or you're going to continue to find $11,000 per year out of the operating budget. Hmm. Yeah. Up on the warrant. This, so, is on, this is CIP coming to us and saying this is what they're 
they are they are yeah. selling it. So, but we haven't taken an official stand on it at all. And if you know, if we want to delay it another year, we can. Okay. I mean, that's still an option right now. So. Um, Let's go from the top to the bottom. Okay. So, so we'll go back to the generator. The fire um, extrication equipment, is that something we want to get this year? This is this is fully, right? This is the full price? Um, yes, that the is three the full. Three pieces, uh, three Correct. Yeah. Okay. So um, how do we feel about that? Yeah. Pro, pro. Okay, so yeah. we're going to keep that on there. Um, town hall assessment. Now, is this a good number? It's the best number I have, okay. and so the company that was, we all hoped, going to provide me, who, who even thought that it would be so hard just to get, to, get a budgetary figure? Um, but they are now not going to get us a budgetary figure in time, and maybe in the spring they will, which is not helpful. So I went back to the facilities director to the, um, at the school, who may himself be able to find us a better budgetary figure. but. Um, you can put this on the warrant, and hopefully by the time March comes, we'll know better. The deliberative session can change it, or we can decide that there's not enough money and it won't happen. I, you know, it's it's the best number we have, okay. but it's a shot in the dark. Okay, what do you guys think about that? Yeah, I mean that's not coming from the CIP. Taxation. It, right. So if it. I mean, th this doesn't have to be decided to talk about revenue, right? Because there's no revenue That's source. True. So That's it's true. I, I think right. But we do have to yeah, we take a stand on the project. Yep. Um, my only thing is that we, we're going to have to do that in order to find out really how this building is. In order to find out what the plan to, is for the space well, needs to decide right, this to the dots. Um, yep. I don't. I don't disagree. $5,695 payment this year into, so of the whole payment into the CIP, it's taking up $35,695 and you chose to move thirty dollars to fund the generator um, and you were going to keep six hundred ninety. dollars you know. But the, you have, okay, so someone, you, <laughs> has the generator not from CIP, it's from taxation. Well, we so you never really officially took a vote on the CIP either, but you, you know, you are quite right that the last discussion was that the articulating motor was going to wait a year and the money going into Ruben. CIP that Better was going to go it. to that would fully fund the generator instead and you would leave the $5,695 toward the articulating mower that would then wait another year and it would have a little bit more money on it. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I think the generator, um, because this is a um, public safety yeah. and, um, what's the word? I mean, we for? have a working generator now, yeah. right? Uh, command center, we have yeah. lots of power. They need to have, you okay. know. Okay, so is that the will of the board that we put 30, so we fully fund the generator on a CIP and then delay the articulating motor, mo mower? Mower. 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 Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yes. Sorry, articulating water. Whatever the hell you are. Well, he's going to have to show you it because he has really nice pictures when he proposed it. So, yeah, yeah we'll have to get him to show you what so that so is. A well spoken dump truck. <laughs> <laughs> they can do sidewalks. Okay, so this. So that's going to be the go to. Alright, and the forest vehicle, fire. Forestry vehicle, yes. 55 coming out of, so it's fully funded through CIP. Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. 
Sidewalks. Okay, so... So, to be clear, this is going to all but wipe out that fund. It's got $22,000 in it now. It's going to probably get, you know, ten or $11,000 deposited into it mm -hmm. at the end of this year. Yeah. So it'll have maybe thirty-three or thirty-four thousand dollars when you are going to subtract twenty-five. So you'll be left with about nine in there. Okay. And then of course we're only actually withdrawing whatever we actually use for the project. Right. So it may not be that much. Right. Okay. I'm I'm okay with that. Um, yeah, because we've had a lot of concerns with the sidewalks, so we should definitely try to work on that. Okay. Okay. Yep. All right. So so taxation is going to only be the town hall, right? That's what I have now. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So, um, so that brings the CIP total, the income from the CIP fund, to one hundred and seventy-four thousand dollars, and that brings the income from um, capital reserve funds to one hundred ninety-nine thousand dollars, even. Say that again. I'm sorry. Say that again. So, um, the total income, income. So, so remember, money from reserve funds to spend for things, that's income. So, the total we're going to use from CIP is $174,000. Versus the two twenty nine six ninety five. Correct. Okay. And then... Um, the total from all funds, because 25000 is coming from the Transportation Capital Reserve Fund. And those two together. Right. Yep. Those two together is now $199,000. So that's the amount that we're putting on the 3915 Capital Reserve Fund revenue mm -hmm. line. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this section becomes 219. Uh, I'm sorry, 209 even. Right. 10 and 199. Yes. So that's um, at this point total revenue of one million five hundred seven thousand one forty one dollars. <coughs> one million five oh seven one four one. Okay. But then that also so I did add, um, well, now that I've messed up spreadsheets, um, I'm not sure anymore. So when I, when I put the capital items on the operating spreadsheet, I'm putting their total cost. I'm not putting, um, I'm putting the warrant article figure. I'm not putting the taxation number, just to be clear. But yes, I think it has everything. So I will revise the loader. And otherwise I think it's correct. Um, it needs the second cruiser. So this land appraisal for 5000 That is funded by the Conservation Land Trust Fund and it only happens if there is a land owner that wants to put their land in conservation and requests financial assistance from the town to do so. Hmm. So we don't need to account for that in revenue? We... No, because it's not a transfer in, it's a, it's a transfer between reserve. Yeah. Okay. I gotcha. Okay. Okay, so. Okay. so the reserve fund needs to change, right? Because it's going to be instead of 186, 895. Yes, in the in the in the op the operating budget is not up to date. And, okay. and by the way, there are likely other warrant articles that we haven't addressed yet. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You know, like the the conservation one. Yep. Okay. So that's just I wanted to address the other funds so that we could get the revenue figured out. Okay. So consensus is we're accept accepting the revenue. And and I will get you a new spreadsheet for the operating budget that reflects the. Um, the Warren Articles and um, your decision on the Warren Articles and as the correct operating fund um, 
proposal. Okay. All right. So, well, do we have to plan another budget meeting? Well, um, it's not so. You do at some point have to figure out the default budget. Um, that I think it, that and um, sort of finalizing the CIP are all that you have left to do. But um, I would just have you hold off on that because um, later on the agenda you'll see the tax rate setting. And, yep. and the update on that is that we don't have a tax rate, which isn't really news, except I bring it up anyway because once we do have a tax rate, the board is going to have to get together pretty quickly to evaluate that and decide whether you will accept it as um, the preliminary rate that the state proposes or whether or not you want to um, put any fund balance money in there to offset it. Okay. Um, so we need we so need for you to do that pretty quickly. When when do we so I know you don't we don't have a status on when we're getting it, right? We don't have a status and we've reached out many times and well, the state is not very communicative. We always hope to have tax bills issued November first. Um, it doesn't no, December 1st. No, no November first. December first. Um, yeah. So, this happens every year that, you know, okay. it's just the nature of, of how it is. So, um, any day now, she will call and, and say it's coming and talk us through it and okay. I will let you know. So, we might need to... so I, would, I would say let's notice that meeting as a regular meeting because it, I would guess it's not going to take you very long to set the tax rate yeah. and then while you're here anyway, um, we can go over the default budget. Okay. And if you want the CIP. Okay. All right, okay. let's do that. So you'd be confident that it's going to be any day? Um, I mean... Th there's no other... <laughs> <laughs> um, it could be another two weeks. There's, there's really no way to know. And so then they get... Are, are we prepared to just put it out, like, right away? After yes, the, the office I mean, is the office is ready. ready. Okay. Yes, it's so just yeah. it's going to take once once we get the preliminary rate, the board needs to meet to set the actual rate, and then we need to um, generate the warrant, and then tax bills can be sent out, and so then um, we have mailways do that, and it takes them they need three days lead time. So, so they, but they have. They, have, they need what? They need three days lead time. Okay. So, three weeks. Um, yeah. So, but once, okay, okay so, so once you, you have 30 days to pay your tax bill. Right, so it could possibly go into January, and we really, really, really don't want that to happen. No. But it is possible, it's happened before, and life will go on. It, it'll take about a week from the time we get a preliminary rate, probably, until the bills in are the in the mail. Depending on how each piece moves. And you're pushing and you're pushing, right? <laughs> calling and calling them? Yeah. Okay. And we had all of our stuff in on time this year. Well, not exactly on time, but not as late as it usually is. <laughs> we need to work on that. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, there was some stuff that was required that should have been instantly be able to be supplied by other departments. It, it's, it's a struggle for everybody every year, but every year we get a little bit better. So, yes, we should be better and we'll get there. Okay. All right. Any, anything else on A? We're all set there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Avatar contract. It is in your folder. Um, I went um, underneath it. Yep. Um, it's printed on the yellow paper. They have negotiated back from their original proposed 12 days to um, 11 days. It does have an increase. It's a one-year contract. You, um, There's no urgency in signing this. Um, it does inform the budget, and it's reflected in the budget. Um, the one thing to note is that it um, 
It's a one-year contract. I don't know that there would be necessarily any savings in locking in a multi-year contract, but typically with Avatar we have the option of um, a contract that ends in the reval year, and that way you kind of lock in your reval amount. There is that benefit. Otherwise, potentially every year it goes up a little bit more. So, how many days did we lock it? Um, we, we have 11 contract days. Based on an estimated 12 days on call as needed. We need to the contract. Then she didn't correct it. What is that? Is that what the signature page says? That's the that's part of the agreement. What is the sign? I wonder if she didn't change it in all the areas. Right here, it's 12 days. Oh, so because in here. So we cross it off and or, um, I, I would say you can certainly cross it off and initial it to be eleven days and if she has a problem with that then she can reissue it. Okay. But you know, more to the point on the signature page that you're checking the box it says eleven days. So okay. yeah, I would I would I can also ask for that revision if it makes you feel better, because there isn't any Well, it's not, a, it's not a signature page anyway, and the signature page is calling out for 11 days, so... But I will call her attention to it. Happened. But yeah. I, I would cross it out, though, and, okay. and write 11, just because... And it says here in the letter, 11 days. Page 2 out of 7 is the one that it's showing 12. Got it, thank you. So, what is our, and everything else is based the same. on it's the same. Yeah. Are you all for the signing then? I changed it to be 11 days okay. because it, I think they just missed yeah. one. Yep. Um, so, we need to make a vote on it and then sign it. If you're ready to do I, so. Yeah. If you guys are ready to do it, okay. So yeah, I'll, I'll make a motion to leave. Accept the avatar one year contract for 11 days of service. Second. For Yep. There is. $6,048. Yep. Second. Okay. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. okay. I think we all have to sign it, right? Oh. At least a quorum of you. Okay. We can all sign it. I'm not sure why because there's not really any other options. Sometimes there are other options, but do you like me? <laughs> <laughs> All right, department head meetings. This you and I talked about, and you wanted it on the agenda. The idea of regular, whether it be monthly or quarterly, meetings okay. of department heads. Um, it's something that I can do with them, um, and, and, let, and with or without a board member, if one of you, sorry, wants to um, join me, but an opportunity for the department heads to talk about what's going on with them, and for them to stay more in touch with um, each, what's, other. each other and you what's going on. started this, and then it kind of fizzled. And then it, fil and it fizzled. Well, you know, I think only Mike only was the only one that did it. He he met with the department yeah. heads. It's really more about having the department heads get together to talk and maybe just having either you or, or one of us coming in and having like kind of keeping well, it going. Yeah. Sort of. I mean, yeah. just want to make sure that they're all communicating yep. for sure together. Um, yes. Especially public. I mean, I think safety. a lot of good things came out of the, it was one meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think we need to keep it going. Monthly or quarterly or something else? Maybe quarterly. quarterly. Yeah, and monthly might be a. Unless a question in, in a situation comes up. It can all, yeah. And then yeah. once, if we know of something that's a, turned into a, a, it was a problem that we could certainly meet sooner, um, do, you, do you think we should, as the board, do it? Or as a representative from the board doing it? Or do you feel that you should do it? 
I feel as though I should be there. Of course. I would not um, discount the value of having one of you present just because it helps you all understand mm -hmm. what they're doing and what's going on and what they've had to deal with. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say, you know, we can try to schedule it for a time that is likely to work with one of you and you can either make it or not make it and we'll just carry on and I hope that you can. The, thing, the only thing is that, you know, Mark is the only one that's not a full-time employee of the town and, and works in other positions, so the likelihood of yeah, him being yeah. part of something is less likely unless it's in the evening and then, then you got the other ones that have to come back. So I'm not sure how, that, yeah. how well that works. I can talk to him about it and see Mark, if there's a day of the week or, that's you know, for him. right, or maybe yeah. if there's an afternoon, yeah. you can do it in an afternoon at least. A late afternoon or something of that sort, you know, and because, like I said, the other ones are on, well, I'm not sure what Bob's schedule is, but, you know, if we can just, yeah, I mean, I, I don't mind stepping in and being part of it as well. Um, with notice, I can have time. Uh, during the day too. If it works well, the other thing is, I can just I can put it on the board's calendar, and you can come or not mm -hmm. come, yeah. and let me know if you think you can make it. And if it turns out to be more than, to, you know, more than one of you, well, then we have to post it as a meeting. Then yes. yeah, but it could be a non-public meeting. Doesn't have to. Depending on the content, on the content of the meeting. Yeah. 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 So okay, let's let's do that. Let's why don't you kind of I'll gauge and find out. a time. Yeah. yeah. And it's not something we have to. We can talk about it again at the next meeting too. Yeah. So it's you know when you when you talk to Mark again, and then like I say, the other two are employees, so they're here. Anyway, so okay, sounds good. Recreation. You just wanted to keep it on the agenda. I do. So we no no news is no different no um, updates on that. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, so, um, ZBA appointments, Sheila Riley? So, I don't have any question about appointing her. I, so, I, the, the notice just went out. We have at least two openings. Oh, okay. But separately from the notice going out, um, she did mention that she would be willing to serve. And where she served for a number of years on the planning board, she would be good to have because she has the right background knowledge. So I'm suggesting that the board appoint her while because there is an upcoming case while we wait to see if we can get more public interest from the notice. All right. I'll move that we appoint Sheila Riley to the uh, zoning board of adjustments. Okay. Seconded. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Tuesday night town hall hours. This is to say whether or not we want to make it official. Yeah. Because the notice had gone up that it was only going to go to December 31st. Oh, okay. So um, I've heard nothing but positive about it, and I think that they are feeling good about it as well. Um, so I'd like to see it stay that way. Yep. I think it's great. It's an easy, easy win. All right. So consensus that we're going to go forward on that way. Very good. All right. Very good. Tax rate status, we've already been there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Space needs, we're, we're waiting for more information, so we will yes. be doing it sometime down the road. Right. Tra uh, transfer station ordinance. Um, uh, uh, can we do them all, or should we do them separately? Um, I would do them separately, okay. but I just want to reiterate that with the transfer station ordinance, it would be helpful to know that you... Um, you agree with the final language as proposed um, so that we know what we're carrying forward to the next pu pu public hearing, but that you should have another public hearing closer to March so that because it's going to be on the ballot, okay. um, we would want people to be more familiar, right, familiar at the time when they're voting. So how does this end up on the ballot? Like, is it... It's kind of like um, one of the zoning ordinance revisions. Okay. But it's not 12 pages. Of <laughs> no, no. Just like zoning ordinance revisions aren't really either. Okay. So it's just a Warren article that so, says this is the gist of the change. And then at both the deliberative session and the voting day, yep. um, we have 
copies available so that people can reference them if they want to. Okay. Okay. And it will also be on the website, so when we put out all the information, um, like the annual report and all the other, the budget and everything else for people to reference, it will be one of those things. Okay. Yeah, I didn't have any, I read through it, and I didn't have any thing that... I didn't either. I read through it, it looks great, yeah. All right, so we'll accept all the proposed changes and proceed to go forward with it. Okay, then you will have, um, I will give you um, new copies of, of the two traffic ordinances you can sign, and they can be effective at any time. Okay. I will give you, I will print out for you non-red line versions. So we can, so and, we can sign um, at the next meeting? Yeah. Okay, sounds good. All right, so this one we can sign, the traffic... Uh, now, do we have to accept them? Um, you you accept the accept, accept the proposed revisions, yes, and then you can sign them. You can even authorize yourselves to sign them outside of a meeting, um, mm -hmm. since you've agreed on the revisions. But um, I would have you sign a um, a clean copy without the red line. Okay. I guess my, my only the only thing I wanted to. Pointing out, is I do not believe that we should have Bear Road have two different speed yeah, limits. That is my definitely my only. I mean, um, I understand what people are saying. The past Sligo is mm -hmm. kind of wide open. People are going to speed anyway. They're going to go faster on that stretch yep. anyway. Yeah. Um, but trying to police two different speed limits. Well, then if they're starting faster yeah. when they're heading up yep. towards the neighborhood, then are they going to slow down? No. So. You know, I just think we should be consistent yeah. on that whole. That's the wording that's it. That's in the yeah. It currently sounds great. Yeah. So I would just. Okay. Um, so okay, and and then um, okay, so we should accept them, and then we can sign them when we come into the office. At any time when you can, and, and I can okay. catch whoever hasn't signed at the next meeting. Okay, so the travel restriction 14-002, is there any complaints on that? No. Or, or okay, yeah. so I'll make a uh, hear a motion to accept it as presented. So Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so we can move forward with that. Um, ordinance, um, Number 05-01. I move we accept ordinance 05-01 as uh, presented. Okay. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Passed. And where's my third one? Oh, the third one is this, but we're just accepting it as. Um, just to accept the language to move forward to the next public hearing. All right. So, um, on the uh, transfer station. 93-1. Okay, so I'll, I'll move we accept the language uh, to move forward to the next public meeting. Okay, second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so all three of those are done. Excellent. Thank okay. You. And then once you get all of them, you can go ahead and come in and just sign them all at the same time. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. Oops, what am I Should we go through these POs? All right, then go ahead. And what do you got? Uh, transfer station stickers. Um, purchase order 1796 came out of $410.23. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Then we've got a um, move purchase order 1776 to LaBelle Computing Services for IT support for 10 hours in the amount of $760. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. It's expensive. Mm -hmm. Ah, Throwback Brewery wants to go to the Winter Farmer's Market. They really want an answer. Very contentious. Yeah, well, yes. So, oh, is it really contentious? Well, no. What's, what's contentious <laughs> is that they've been held up because the board's now meeting every other week, and this was not in your folder last week because I wasn't here to get it in your folder. So Why do, they, why do we need to get some pressure? Well, that was my It's problem. only because it's alcohol. Yeah. Um, they're going to serve alcohol? They're going to serve But alcohol? it's in Summersworth. 
No. 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 Wentworth Greenhouse. Wentworth Greenhouse is in Rollinsburg? Yeah. I didn't know that. I love that. I go to the, those, these farm markets religiously. I thought it was the summer store. No. No, that's Rollinsburg. Whatever. That's where I live. That whole road from oh. the traffic light um, at Oak Street all the way until um, yes. past Jenko. Past Jenko, oh, like another quarter of a mile after Jenko. Cool. Okay, cool. Um, I move that we allow Throwback Brewery to participate in the Winter Farms Market at Wentworth Greenhouses. I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 I used to hate the winter service when I did visit. They would the traffic can't. is so bad. <laughs> yeah, you still live right there. Oh yeah. Oh, oh I bet. Yeah. It's terrible. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> um this is a... this is Dear Gail, this is a letter sent to Gail and St. Hilaire to approve the St. Mary Church Fair at the St. Anne's Field will hold on November 23rd, 2019 at the American Legion Hall on Foundry Street. I move that we approve St. Mary Church Fair. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Um, the purchase order 1794 to mailways for the tax collector um, for postage. Um, for property tax and newsletter mailing in the amount of four hundred and sixty dollars. Um, I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Did they have... I printed one of those for you and I just wanted to print it out so that you can have a paper that you don't feel like you have to. You can wait if you want to wait. Oh, oh sure. Yes. No, I want that. It's, it's somewhere in your pile of oh, okay. stuff when you sent it. Um, and then request for disbursement for a select board so, for Miles England in the amount of 1000 and for Denise Knowles in the amount of 1200 and for me in the amount of 1000 Do you need to... Uh, uh, I'll second that. I don't, I, I don't, I don't see there's mm -hmm. a need to break them up. You can break them up, but I don't think you need to. When yeah. You're all prepared. You can just... I'd like to disperse them all. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. I would say that do not to sign your own. I can't sign my own. Yeah. So, there you go. Okay. Um, this is a letter from Because of budget. Budget's the 20th. That's right. Uh, that's, that's why they couldn't do it. It's at so. 6? 
Six thirty. Six thirty. Six thirty. Thank you. All right. Um. Okay. Where else are we? Okay. So. Kind of finished our update. So, um. I have requested a quote for a laptop. Okay. I haven't gotten it yet. I was going to do a purchase order anyway because I could probably approximate the cost. But I want to, since I don't have a quote, I'm going to take the time to um, do the rebudgeting um, because I just want to see where we're at with things and see um, where there's funding or not funding. But I'll, I'll, I'll prepare a purchase order next time the board meets. Um, I wanted to let you all know that the historical committee, had, um, there's a marker um, in a park that they are proposing to have cleaned with their fund. So I'm looking into um, how that process is going to work for getting those funds dispersed. They're held with the trustees. Um, but they do now have their own fund that was uh, um, authorized by, I think it was the 18 town meeting. Um, so that's going on. Um, there was an unfortunate event at the library today. Uh -huh. The flooding. The flooding. There, there was a sewer backup in um, oh. an upper floor of um, restrooms above the library, and so sewage is going down the wall and dripping on the new carpeting. Oh no! And they've lost art supplies. It's in the it's in the back room. It's in the community meeting room, and it's in the library itself. Here and there, um, it did get shut off finally, but it went on for a good part of the day. It wasn't, um, it was a steady trickle, it wasn't, you know, a steady gushing. Um, is the mail going to have to pay for the repairs? That part is not clear, um, but there will be um, a deductible with Primex, but Primex will, um, the, the good news about the carpeting is that they're tiles, so you don't have to replace the whole carpet, you yeah. can replace just the parts that are affected. Um, but they're likely to be closed for the week. Damn. They have not officially decided that. The library director is away on vacation this week, so um, the trustees are stepping in and trying to manage things. Surf Pro is coming tomorrow. Um, I don't know if that means that they'll be up and running by Wednesday or not. I don't know. So they'll, Surf Pro will leave their fans in for, I've had to call them twice, and they'll leave their fans in probably for three days at mm -hmm. minimum. And there, you can't have a library open when the fans are there. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I think they're closed for the week. But. Just with you, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it was gorgeous. I was there um, last Monday for the conservation. It, it's mm -hmm. just gorgeous. I mean, it's so wonderful to have a carpeted floor for yoga. I know, I know. Just, oh my god. All right. Well, just because that's David. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's all I have. Now, what is, what's his status on George's computer that he asked for? That is in your folder, and you can act on it at any time. So, we had a discussion when you weren't here that if you get a laptop as your primary device, can your computer go to George? And we'll hook, we'll get you a display connection. Yeah. We'll, that's an interesting idea. Um, I'd like to talk to Tom about yeah. how that might work and how functional it might be. I mean, Wi-Fi in here the, sucks. The, the well, only device I have for my work is a laptop, and it's you, you know I got to make sure it's robust enough to handle. Sure. Any well, and and I would want to quote it appropriately to make exactly. sure that it could you know. So, but that's an interesting thought. That's because it possible. kill two birds with one stone. But then it would be a desktop, not a not a laptop. For, Yours is a desktop. For right? George. Yeah, for George. Well, George. right, right. So, let's talk to George about the functionality of that, too. Um, but I don't think he would have a problem with that because I don't think he was well, necessarily he looking for a laptop. Yeah, I think the quote. I think he's he got, requesting a desktop. Yeah, I think he oh, was he requesting was a desktop. desktop. Oh, he wasn't. Okay. Okay. I thought it was a laptop. That's what they will they have now. Well, they have those little tent. Well, yeah. well, um, Ed has a nice, great thing. When now George has this little. Oh, it's kind of fun. Yeah, that was done. Kind of, yeah, it was kind of fun. Yeah. Okay, so thank you for the thought. I will look into it and okay. we'll talk to Tom about it, and okay. um, I'll plan a PO accordingly. Okay, we'll see. All right. 
that it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, community input. I just had a question on the road closures. I'm Michael Point with uh, Director of Fleet for the C&J. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been told it's not going to affect our operations. Um, the road closures or the road restrictions? The restrictions, restrictions, right. It will not affect you. It will not affect you. It, it did not. Um, oh, you weren't here when Bob was talking about it. Yeah. No, yeah. If any business that... What it will, it will affect you a little bit, but you won't be able to take a shortcut, so you have a direct route out. So instead of going like down Foundry or something, you'll have to well, go out a, onto Route 4. One forward. of the things that had come up in the meeting, if uh, the tree goes down and I can't go down Roberts Road, then I will have to go down. Yeah. Down. Oh, I mean, of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have to go down. I, we use church. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and... Other than that, uh, we don't go down the back roads, obviously. It's a 45-foot long bus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's one of those things. We pay a lot of money for registrations in town. Yeah. Yeah. And I know money goes towards repairing roads. So yeah. for the, and, and they're not loaded when they leave here. Mm -hmm. So they're under a certain weight. So yeah. it's not like a dump truck. I didn't know if you were... The weight threshold, it's 26,000 pounds. Okay, no, no, we're 37. So yeah. it's still but, over. But there's but, no restriction yeah, to maintain running your business. No. Any, anyone normal. on that road will still have full access right, to the so roads. If I go out of church, or, yeah, I, we don't normally use foundry. Okay. But certain times, like when you have the long freight trains. Yeah. We prefer to go uh, straight across on that shot piece and then turn on the main street, but sometimes I have to go down the church. Yep. Okay. Um, and there's been blockages or issues going down upper main street towards the fire station. Yep. And occasionally I'll have to take boundary, but that's not our preferred route. Okay. Okay, that's all they were saying is that, you know, trying to stay off of the smaller roads and, and staying on the main roads. We don't want them anyways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be there, but I don't want to run into a problem because we're using those. No, because you're using them because there's problems that you can't run into. So that is not a, that is not a question at all. No, okay. None of the businesses in Rollinsford are going to be impacted by this ordinance. It's more about businesses that come in yeah. or taking shortcuts, you know, the, GP, uh, GPS reroutes a lot of these people down Silver and, and, you know, to make it a shorter trip, someone outside of Rollinsford, you know, a shorter trip. And so we're seeing a lot of heavy trucks, dump trucks, and, um, you and, know. And you're uh, going to have issues on Silver because they come across from Summers Road, but that's the only bridge. Well, Silver is so they still have to go. Since Silver is a straight road, but, but it still has a lot of heavy trucks, I mean tractor yeah, trailers no, now, which I've never seen before. Right. Now they're being rerouted by GPS and going down certain roads. That's kind of what we're trying to stop happening, but as uh, Chief Duchon said, it does not impact our businesses in our town to do their business. Absolutely does not. Okay? Very good. Yep. No, we definitely would support you guys doing whatever you have to do to get your job done and you know, he's just saying main roads as much as you can, but when it impairs you, then you, you do what you have to do because you have to get out. Yep. Okay. You Thank can get you. that clarified with Chief Dusham too as, as well. But we'll that was talk room. <laughs> so just, that's how it was uh, presented to us as well. Thank you, Mike, for letting the cemetery know they have a meeting Wednesday night. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Have a good Thank night. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, we let we let him know so that he let Mark know about Cemetery Wednesday night because he didn't know about it. Oh. And we let Bob I was Duchamp talking to Bob out. and says, see you Wednesday night. He says, why? Bob Duchamp? Yeah. He didn't know about it. Well, he got an email. So whether or not he's reading his emails. Because um, I got a copy of the email. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying that we just mentioned it out in the hallway. Okay. So right. the budget's gone out? Excuse me? Has the budget gone out for Wednesday? No. No. Okay. We haven't just determined how we want to talk it. about that before. Yeah, we need to talk about that because, I mean, 
I know that they normally do their own. They bring their own. Let's back up for these two. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. <laughs> Budget committee wants to have copies of the budgets that are going to be presented. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, Chief Duchamp, Chief Rutherford have their own budgets and have copies with them or documentation with them. So, um, high, um, cemetery doesn't usually. So, do we he send does. out? He does because we just have a line. So he has his whatever. Yeah, but he doesn't get copies to everyone. Generally, I don't believe. Um, but anyway, um, do we send out just the uh, the, the uh, budget through the whole town budget, and then? Do you want to send the whole town budget spreadsheet that you've approved, since yeah. they're going to see it anyway? They can start thinking about yeah. everything yeah, we can send and that see the big picture. Or do you want to send the snapshots of the separate departments? I think send the whole budget. It's been because that's what they through. have. That's yeah. what it's going to go forward with. So. Um, and then they may or may not supply their own. That's their. That, I mean, that's, but but we haven't we haven't changed. Anything. They received that email, so they have that opportunity to. They were on distribution. The only one that it might have been Bob's email might have not have been the right email. He uses two different emails. Yeah. He uses two different emails. Yeah. And he doesn't check um, all the time. So, but now he knows, so he might still be there. Um, but I know Mark was on it because I saw it, and um, so okay. we'll, we'll send it forward, we'll, and they'll have at least what we're going to say. You'll send that out in the morning, okay? And then they can bring their own documentation and pass out if they make the copies. Uh -huh. Okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. Anything else? We need to move to go into public for welfare. Or I say ninety-one A four three. Roman number two, letter C. Yep. Second row five.